The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. So it's nice to see everybody again. Um, as been said, my name is Panza Mudito. I'm, I'm living in Newbury Monastery, um, helping there with the building project. I, I wanted to say a couple words before I start the actual Dhamma talk about the project. We're doing... Um, we're now building new huts for the monks and uh, what we call the Sangha house, where we're going to have a library, office, Dhamma hall. And what we're going to do now, we're going to split the monastery in different sections. The, when Buddhist Society of Victoria, they um, bought the land, it was in three different lots already. And now we are amalgamating those lots together. And by doing that, we have this big lot for that, for the whole monastery, and we can separate the monks and nuns. So the monks are going to move on top of the hill, and that's the project we're starting now, and the nuns will stay in the existing buildings we have there. If anybody, we've been there, you can go and look at the, our website or our YouTube channel. We're trying to keep updated with that, with the project, everybody. Um, and we're doing well. There's a, a lot of paperwork being done, uh, sleepless, sleepless uh, nights for some people, and... Uh, we almost there. We there's always one more thing coming up, um, but we are Buddhists, so we're keeping calm and just keep uh, keep plowing ahead with it, and uh, we're getting there. But the shires keep adding those little things there. So building permit is almost there. Uh, we have a, a company now selected, and uh, we have had the first meeting, kickoff meeting with the company, the building building construction company, and. Um, uh, we felt that we got a good good company and we got a good price with it. We almost managed to get it in budget. And uh, funding are coming in as well. Ajahn Brahm is being kindly raising funds for us. We had that fundraising dinner, uh, the gala, a few weeks ago, and that went really well. We got $100,000 for that. So we were really happy for that. So that was a big, big thing happened to us. And now Ajahn Brahm was just in Hong Kong. We apparently, it hasn't come in yet. I'm not sure I can announce it, but I will anyways. We got $88,888 from Hong Kong for the project. So it's uh, doing really well. So thank you, Biffing Hong Kong, Bodhinyana International Foundation, helping us the project. So I'm, I feel really happy about the project. It's, it is moving, uh, moving along and I think next year, this time, definitely by this time, we should be pretty much finishing with the project. And and the, if the money keeps coming like that, everybody's being so generous with the donation, I think we're going to do well as well. We were a bit hesitant starting the project, but wow, we should be fine. We just have to have faith. And uh, maybe that's a good sequence, it's a leeway, uh, what do you call a uh, thing to lead into the Dhamma talk, so have a faith. Have faith in the and uh, and the practice and the have faith in Dhamma. So maybe that would be the Dhamma talk today. Okay, let's see what comes out of my mind. I don't usually. Uh, I come from this tradition of Ajahn Brahm telling us uh, monks that you, you don't need to make too many notes and don't don't prepare for the talks too much. So I'm 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 being blessed being in from Ajahn Brahm tradition of I don't have to you know prepare for these talks and. If, if I don't have it in my mind, I don't, I don't see why I should be just teaching from the books. It, if it doesn't come from the heart, I feel that the heart is what the monks we should be practicing. And, you know, as all of us, we should have to practice the heart. Uh, and the heart, you know, in Pali, we have this word chitta. And you could just, you know, translate the, mind, uh, the word as a, the chitta as a mind. But I like the, the idea that Thais quite often call it, and many other translators as well, they call it that the chitta as heart. So you're cultivating your heart. It's, it gives a it's very you know, beautiful idea that you're cultivating your heart instead of when you, when you think about cultivating your mind, it's more almost like at least in the Western world, I, I get the sense that it's almost like you're trying to make your mind better. Somehow you become smarter. Somehow you become wiser in the world, that you, you avoid troubles. But if you cultivate the heart, it doesn't have that uh, sort of... 
implications. When you, when you think about cultivating your heart, it, it immediately brings this idea that you are trying to be a kinder person. You are cultivating good qualities, skillful qualities in your heart. Kindness, generosity, all these things which we, the Buddha is teaching. So I like that idea that you're, we are cultivating our heart. And by how to do that? How do you cultivate your heart, your mind, your chitta? Well, one thing is same. I was just coming here for the to give the talk here, do the chanting and all these things. And somebody said, "Oh, I better go and sit down before the Dhamma talk so I can uh, calm my mind." And I thought it was that sort of struck me quite. It was because I was a bit thinking about oh. You know, like I'm, I'm not preparing for the talk, but I, you know, your mind goes for that. Your mind start thinking about it, and I think it's for a lot of us. We are overthinking our lives. We are overthinking our what you know how we should be um, going about our lives, and that's just just the word. Somebody says, "Oh, I'm going to go and calm my mind before the dhamma talk." That sort of it, it struck me. It, it calmed my mind. It's because I've been practicing enough years now. I I started with Dajan Brahm already, maybe 2004 in New York when I was living there, and and all these years I've been sort of plotting along with this calmness and just that the word calmness because I've been trying to cultivate it so many years. It's it it strike me as yes that's important. That's what I should be doing. I, if somebody says that word of calm, I, I feel that it's important. And I, I feel that it's something which I need to have it with me. I, all these wisdom things which um, you learn from the books, you learn when all, we go to school so many years, you, we try to memorize things, we're trying to get ahead in life, we're trying to get into a good job. Um, it it doesn't leave lead you into the where we are pointing the Buddhism the Dhamma is pointing you. It doesn't lead you into calmness. That's why we are cultivating the heart, not the mind. That's why I like the idea, and that's why for us the important thing is to cultivate the peace because you can always have that with you, no matter where you go. Last night I, I came here from the Newbury and I stayed here in BSV Center and I mean it's a beautiful center but obviously when you're not in your own bed I, I you know you don't sleep so well so I just kept waking up all night last night and I, you know I so you I don't feel completely rested this morning but who cares I still can have the calm with me or I had to give, you know, I have to give a dhamma talk, and maybe there's people, maybe it's going to be really boring and it sucks. Well, who cares? <laughs> the good thing is, like, then I never have to come back here. <laughs> Do I have to worry about it? No, not really. It's a lot of things in life. It depends how you look at it. So. But if you think about, okay, well, it's still, you know, you still feel nervous, you have to give a public talk. I mean, I think people say it's quite a nerving thing to give a public talk. But if you look at the, where the nervous is, nervousness is, where, where is it? In, is it somewhere in your body? Is it in your bum, resting on your cushion? Do your bum feel nervous? Maybe it does. Some people might nervous, have a nervous bum. Or maybe it's in your chest. Fair enough. I, I, you know, for me, I can feel it quite often in my chest or somewhere. But do I? Maybe I don't pay so much attention to it. I don't put too much attention that the nervous feeling in the body, in the chest, is actually very skillful practice to look at, the, see those things in your body. But sometimes you have to be skillfully avoiding them. Sometimes maybe that's some point, some places it's more skillful, sort of look away. 
try to change your perception a little bit. So I, actually, I was sitting there on a cushion just before I got here, and I, I look at my, I, f I felt the feeling in my bum. And that just felt, well, okay, there's this feeling of pressure, warmth, soft thing from the cushion. And when I paid attention to that, I wasn't so occupied, my, I didn't occupy my, my mind, my heart, with too much nervousness about the public talk. So that would be a skillful way of practicing, where you see that, well, what, is a, what sort of leads you away from this unpleasant feeling? We cannot avoid unpleasantness in the world. They, that's how world is. World, you, you have the good times and you have the bad times, and they're sort of balanced. But we have to learn how to take both of those in, in skillful ways. So when, you, when you're in those bad moments, we all have them. You know, you feel blue, you don't want to do something, but you know, the life has to go on, so you have to go with it. But you, have, you can still have a soft heart towards those feelings, what comes of having to do those things. And that's why we have to keep practicing and have faith that the practice works. And then when we have those good times, and you know, time seems to just, the sun is shining and the birds are singing in the skies and you don't feel depressed today, oh, how good it is. We, you get lulled into thinking that this is how it is. This is how it should be, and this is, this is normal me. There is no abnormal you or normal you. If, you. if you take those two things and don't make this big duality out of it, that somehow I should be only experiencing like these, the good days, and you shouldn't have those bad days, well, that's not reality. And that's why we have to have Skill, skillful ways of um, practicing. And that's why, going back to the, uh, the, the sada, the faith, the have, the have the faith in the practice that it does work. If you will stop practicing, may, let practice meaning meditating, trying to cultivate your heart, you have to have faith that my mind it's not going to be in the same place that it is if I just keep at it, even if it's a good day or a bad day. If you forget your practice when it's a good day, mindfulness, meditation, and then the bad days come, well, you don't have it with you anymore. If you stop practicing because I don't feel like it today, my mind is just, oh, it's just upset. Well, then when the good times come, they just slip through you and you don't just pick up the practice either because what's the point? So have faith that this practice actually works and, and investigate, see your own mind. That's a, it's a bit of a problem for me. I've noticed that recently coming from a personal perspective is what happens as a monk, we, you go on with this thing for years and years, and you get, get lulled into this kind of place of nothingness. And it's really difficult for us to sometimes pick up the practice, because you, we have a habit as well for... My habit is I just sit down and I just don't seem to put any effort. You have to put a certain amount of effort into the practice, into the meditation. Think that it's, you know, the sort of think your way up a bit about it. Because otherwise, you, what happens, I, for me personally, I just sit down and I don't have too much expectations anymore. That phase has passed. That's, for beginners, that's quite a normal thing to have a lot of expectations. Oh, I'm going to meditate, it's going to be amazing, these things happened, or oh, am I going to get somewhere? You know, you, or you had really strange feelings in your body, your body expands or floats, or all kind of things can happen. It's an it's amazing thing, and it's, 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 it's quite nice in the beginning. But after you keep going for years and years and years, 
And if you keep meditating for hours and hours and hours every day, it sort of tells, it gets a bit dull, I have to admit. And these, these things, even if it happens, that you, you get these amazing bodily feelings, like you feel like you're floating and you're, you wonder if I'm levitating now, is it happening? It doesn't excite after a while. It sort of becomes like, yeah, okay, well, the body seems to be floating, yeah, whatever. But so put skillful effort into your practice, even if you sort of don't drift away from the practice. That's what I'm trying to say. Have faith that the practice, you have to have constant practice. It doesn't mean you have to meditate one, one hour every day. It's, that doesn't what I'm trying to say. It means that you cultivate the heart in your everyday life, the mindfulness. And then try to have moments where you can have a time off. Whether it's before you go to bed or when you come back from work, you sit down. And instead of turning the telly on, you sit down and you feel what's happening in your body or your mind. Have cultivate the skill where you can see what's the state of the heart. And that would be a really good, if you can go there, that you get into this habit of seeing how, how, does, how do you feel in your heart, in your mind, in everyday life. And how does it affect, how, what's the effect of practicing every day? Does it have any effect? Try to have a bit of an a mind which is investigates. Well, this is how it seems to affect. And for me, it's been quite nice now because I'm, in, I'm part of now the building project. And all of a sudden, I mean, for seven years, I, I studied in Bonignana with Ajahn Brahm. And we have the senior monks. And they're, they're sort of the, the windshield in the car. They, they, they get caught all the bucks. And us junior monks, you just plod along in the behind. And you are blissfully unaware of anything what happens in front, in the windshield. And you just meditate all day. And it's very easy. When, you, when you're a junior monk. And all of a sudden, I'm here, and I'm in charge of a building project. And I'm a lot more busier than I was for seven years. And it's, it's not a huge deal of business now, but it really, I've noticed that it affects my, my mind. My mind has this getting into this kind of thinking, and I'm, I'm and my mind think, mind, thinks that thinking is important. Whereas I got into the state of Bodhinyana where oh, so many years, Ajahn Brahm always keeps telling us, don't, don't value thinking. It doesn't have that much value. It's a lot of it's just habitual talk, where you, like you would talk to somebody, your, your friend. It's just you talk, 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 and there's not, not much value to it. It's same with your mind. So when you train like that for years and years, you, you, can, you get into this kind of play, place where thoughts come to your mind and you really don't pay too much attention to that. And it's actually a, quite a nice place to be in. It's like the, the, the best holiday you can get. It's not the holiday you go to the beach or whatever and there's all your good friends there and like uh, you know how that would be the best holiday whatever you imagine your best holiday the best holiday is actually a holiday from yourself that person who follows you everywhere you go start wake up in the morning before you go to bed and then you go to bed and okay the person is gone but you're not there either but imagine if that person stopped following you first time in your life Oh, oh, great. He's not talking to me anymore. Oh, what a bliss. Or, this, or the talk starts coming and you're like, you're not paying attention. It's almost like your wife talking to you after a while. You just pay, don't pay attention. It's the same with your own mind. Imagine if you be like that in your own mind. Or oh, husband, let's say. Well, it has to be husband. 
if imagine if you're in that place with your own mind where your husband talks to you and you sort of just it just whizzes past you know, because you've been listening to that husband's talk for so many years you just like whoosh, you you don't pay any attention to that. that's it's a, it's actually quite a peaceful place to be you don't try to ignore the husband or the wife it's just you know we get into this kind of habits where you hear some person talking and you sort of tune out selective hearing up maybe that's the word but imagine if you have selective hearing on your own mind that is actually a very nice place to be in you don't pay so much you don't put so much value into that mind so anyways after being Bodhinyana for enough years, I, I, you get into this kind of thinking where, uh, way of habits where I didn't judge those thinking too much. The thinking is there, but it's quite a lot easier just to let it just sort of drift along and not getting caught up with that. It's like it's me, it's my thinking. But now I've started to get busy with the project and have to concentrate and read emails and and be on the internet and it, there's this influx of information coming in all the time and it's difficult it's really difficult to to sort of filter it out from your mind once if you start putting a lot of things in it seems to be to me that the mind needs to you know, like it just goes there for some reason. It's like I, I, if I talk a lot with somebody, as a monk, you don't really, uh, we trying to stay by yourself a lot. And if you try, you know, stay away from too much talking. And I've noticed that if I have meetings or I, have, I, I tend to engage with somebody, I talk a lot. The talking stays in my mind. It's it's amazing. It's I, I I have these dialogues in my head. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe none of you have it, but I think you might have it. But so the dialogue started there. The doubting mind started came back, and it's actually it's quite a yucky thing to have. I I didn't know how. I I really didn't like it until I got it. Uh, it sort of came back so strong. So what I did, I started to practice more. Instead of uh, keep away from meditating and trying to distract myself, I try to now have more time by myself. So instead of, let, let's say, you meditate one hour, I started, I should meditate two hours now because the mind was so busy and that's what I'm I'm let's see what's gonna happen I might be mad at the end of this year well, before this building project is and don't ask me to come for give Dhamma talks then because <laughs> it's not gonna be pleasant but so far I've been managed to keep my mind in this sort of nice soft state and that's actually a good indicator indicator for your mind. Well, you know, people ask, well, well, what's how can I judge if my meditation is going well? Well, if your mind is soft, that's how you can judge it. If you are irritated and snappy person, or um, that is an indicator that your mind is not soft. So, soft mind equals calm mind soft mind is calm mind that it that it's an indicator of good meditation of having purity of mind what we were chanting just now and that also why we always as a monks we always praise that you know you keep your sila keep your precepts and you know well does it matter if I drink a lot, drink a little bit, or I maybe I you know I have to lie to keep in certain certain things in in work life? That doesn't lead you your mind into soft state. If have enough faith in these things like the precepts that your sila, 
is very important for your mind. I met a few years ago quite a famous Sri Lankan man who it was a f he was a lot of you would know him but um, he was quite a famous for um, when he was young young child as a chanter and he had this amazing ability of remember his chanting from his past lives and I met him um, briefly I, I did talk to him and all that but he he ca he ca he gave this story about his life how he he sort of became too famous, too young, and too fast. He had this ability from the previous lives, but if you don't put the practice in this lifetime, those things, they fade away. You can have it maybe when you're young, but if you don't keep putting the effort in, you will lose it. There's no certainty in this lifetime that or you practice in some point and it will carry carry with you. It won't. You have to put the effort. You have to have the faith in the th these things that yes, I should practice. And I mean, it's a. I'm not trying to push you know all of you into like oh you have to meditate hours and hours and hours. But I, I just trying to inspire you that you you know you're doing well. Most of you is because you come here already. You are practicing Buddhist. You actually put the effort to listen even these Dhamma talks. That's a, that's a lot to be said. So you're doing well, but don't stop. If the life is not going well, don't stop. If it goes well, don't stop. If you get busy, meditate more, not less. Have faith that important things in life is not gaining a lot of things, but it's actually learning how to develop heart which is soft, which is easy, malleable. It takes practice, it's not easy, but we just have to keep at it, all of us. Otherwise, Buddhism is it's like other any other religion we we talk a lot but we don't put it into practice then it doesn't have value we can have all these grandiose statements about the dhamma it's it's right it's timeless it's it's the way to leading to the end of suffering sure it is of course it is i, I wouldn't be a monk if i wouldn't believe it but it is almost be too high fluting if you don't do the basic steps sure we have faith in the buddha dhamma and the sangha and that's important that for a lot of us who actually are quite deeply into this it gives us sort of uh, kindness into the heart it gives the sweetness into our lives we have something to rely on we 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 have faith that the path works So it is important, but the f you can also have faith, confidence in the, in the things where you can actually see it working every day. That yes, your mind seems to be at ease, even if your boss is yelling at you, or you get in a difficult situation in life, or and you can be at ease when everything seems to be fine. You don't get sucked away with it. So have faith that this, this, the practice works. And I don't know how much more, maybe I should take some questions before I s keep rattling about it. It's 20 past, so I take questions from the audience. And if there's anything in the internet, I can take questions from the internet as well. I've got a question. Okay. Bhante, you've, um, you, you were in the building industry previously, mm -hmm. and do you find that now that you've taken on the project, the building project within the NBN, that you, NBM, uh, w that you are, s are starting to get into the same kind of 
habits. The habit, mm. habit patterns that you had previously, which mm. perhaps took you into a monastic life? Quite the opposite. If it, it takes me away from the monastic life. No, uh, um, it, it, that's what I was sort of saying, that it's interesting that the habits were, you know, from the, from the previous, the thinking is there. The 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 where you use all of a sudden you just think it's all it's so important to have this thinking mind you pay attention to that. Um, I sort of always had the idea that uh, I I don't really I didn't see the value of sort of pursuing. The, I was in I wasn't just building industry. I was doing other things as well, but. I, I had these ideas like, where is this leading me? What, if you start, I like the, you know, I'm not sure it's Arjun Brahms, but um, saying, but he, he repeats it quite often and he says, and, and then what? And it's, I like that idea then uh, that you do something and then what? It's always, if you start following that trail of thinking, um, well, I mean, we finished this project, and then what? I, it sort of cuts it cuts it into a certain point. You can always take keep t taking it somewhere, but you just ha sort of have to like, well, I mean, this is it. I I finished today. I I don't have to keep thinking. How do we communicate this better? The I mean, the, the building project for everybody. So we keep keep it moving ahead. How do we? Can we push something for, so we get it going faster? I don't. I just I sort of I just do one thing and then I it's almost like force myself to stop it. Just then what? Then what? Don't go into that. Just keep habitually thinking further and further and further than you need to. I'm not sure. I'm sort of forgot your question already, but it's. I like the idea of like thinking. You know, then what? Then what? Where is this going to lead me? Is it going to lead me into a good place that uh, I'm? You know, I'm trying to be. Uh, you know, helping other people on the path as well. And with the, you know, there will be good nuns staying there. You know, monks are getting good accommodation, so I'm putting my effort into that now. So I'm, I'm doing good thing. So I'm trying to direct my mind into the good state. Yeah. Just from my reflection, I've, I've, I've um, recently changed my role at work and yeah. gone back to a role that I had a few years ago, which I left for various reasons. And I've noticed that I've gone straight back into the same habit. Ah, uh, habit, yeah. Right. Straight back into more of the mental gossip, uh -huh. right? And losing the mindfulness and just mm. reaction, reaction. Yeah, reaction. yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I, it's so easy to go back there. That's why it, the practice takes long time. It, if it was so easy to change your mind, it, um, uh, then we would have a trick for it. There is no really trick to that. That's why you just have to keep at it. At least, I mean, that is the starting point is to notice that. If you don't even notice that, well, there's no hope of changing. And that's why it sort of seems to be really difficult because you're noticing it and you're just like, oh, I don't like this. But that's the start. If, if you don't have um, the starting point, the sort of what they call in Pali the nibida, the sort of like the yuckiness, the turning away from something, then, well, you just plod along. You just go ahead and be an angry person and you, you're thinking this is me and this is my way of behaving and that's it there's nothing to it you cannot change yourself but we have to have faith that you can actually change your way of thinking if there's no if the practice wouldn't work then well what's the point what's the why would you meditate and be mindful about it but you are f ahead of the game because you don't like it you actually saw that you know not wanting to hold on to that so it will lead you, that's mindfulness, it will lead you into sort of turning away from that because you don't like that habit of judging others or yourself or the situation or the, this sort of mental gossip, what do you call it? So you just sort of like, oh, here it is again. Mm, oh, interesting. Yes, yes, have kindness towards it. 
So, I mean, have softness towards it. It's not your fault. It's just, we all do it. So, don't push it, push it away or fight it or something. That's the important thing. That's not skillful. Yeah. On the back, yes. You want to, Richard, do you want to take the microphone to the back so we can? No, I, I think it's good. That one, let's, okay, I can repeat it if you don't want to talk okay. to the microphone. Mm -hmm. We feel tired. Oh. The feeling of tiredness is unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> when you get older, you get tired. <laughs> and, and the I tiredness and unpleasant. I, yeah. I don't think there was much think, thinking. But mm. uh, instead of thinking, sometimes I replace it with the thought of, the, of the taking refuge. Mm. Because when, uh, and then chant the, uh, the three refuges. Yeah. And then because I'm so tired, I say, yeah. if this is my last breath, <laughs> what would my mind be? And then I, yeah. I and, and then that's the way to replace the thinking about what I did today, ah. what I said today. That's great. So, so you, so you, 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 that's, I mean, that's why, because you've been practicing a long time, and so you have enough faith that it brings you this kind of, elates your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a really good, and it's very skillful, I would say, that to have faith in, in, in you know, that's your practice. Yes. And I know tiredness myself as well, because I, I said before here, but I have this um, uh, disease in my body, which really tires me out. I, I get into this kind of thing where it's really easy for me to get negativity because I really am low energy and I used to just fight it all the time. And, um, but it's same for me. I, if don't get into negativity. You're tired. You know, it's good. Then it's, you know, for you, it's like, oh, I have, you know, at least I have faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. And the f faith brings you sort of like sweetness in your life. Brings, you know, maybe brings out, you know, smile in your face. And when you die, well, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. But what? <laughs> what? No more, no buts. <laughs> but when it comes to meditation, when I was young, I was able to sit up and do my mm. meditation. Mm. But when, as I get older, I find lying, <laughs> lying in bed and meditate and letting go of the body, yeah, yeah. letting go of the holding position, is the holding position that that is not easy. So I lie down and meditate, and, and um, if so I can't meditate, but? I just take the three refuges. <laughs> oh, it's perfectly good. I mean, I do that same thing. I, I, sometimes my stomach aches so much, I cannot be, I have to get in this kind of lying down position. That, um, I, so I, that's how I meditate as well. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's good. I, if, you, if you can... You know, don't just like fall asleep all the time. So your mind is not into the mind knows that oh, I'm lying down, but I'm meditating. Then it's just fine. So unless you sometimes I think I do thing where I try to escape things, so I just go to sleep. And especially when I was when your mind wants to go into this kind of it's this depression or something, you just want to go to sleep because you want to forget. But if you meditate, you're lying down and you're meditating, you're happy. Well, that's per that's really good because you're not trying to push something away by sleeping all the time. <laughs> that's what happens with you know with the sleeping quite often is um, we try to avoid things. But if you're meditating, I mean, you're not avoiding. You are embracing something, and that's good. That's skillful. Yes. So have uh, notice that if you why are you sleeping, and you, you know if you're meditating, that's good. Any other questions here in front? Yes. Da, da, da. Uh, hello, Bante. Uh, oh. I just want your opinion on something. Uh, is it fair to say that as you grow in wisdom that you think less and like, or maybe thinking becomes less, uh, it becomes uh, less forceful, maybe it's you... When you meditate? You are no, what? as in, as you grow in wisdom. As you oh, wiser, when the wisdom grows. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. thinking isn't so like forceful, maybe you don't have to think so much. Maybe if you're not so wise, then you actually have to put a lot yeah. of effort into thinking. 
the thinking is not so forceful. When the wisdom grows, the thinking is not so forceful. Yes, I, that's I, that's a fair thing to say. Okay, yeah. Um, the, yes, the thinking is there, but um, you don't sort of add stories into it. Um, you don't think it's you getting all these things happening. It's um, the the thoughts are there, but you don't sort of associate yourself with it. So um, maybe that they're not so forceful. Yes, yes, you can definitely look at it that way as well. I didn't think of that, but it sounds sounds right to me. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions or comments? There's one lady there. What time do we have to stop? Forty. Oh, plenty of time. Um, yes. So I also have a chronic illness, mm -hmm. and sometimes the pain in my body is so excruciating. Mm -hmm. I just. How do you bring your mind back from that when your body is so intensely painful? In pain. Mm. You have to, because you. It's very, 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 very easy to go to negativity. When it's like, oh, I'm having this, and nobody else is having this pain. Why do I have to? And you, and you go into this habitual thinking of negativity. Let's try to turn away from that. That's the really a skillful way of like, okay, yes, I have this. It's not my fault. It's nobody's fault. It's just the nature taking, you know, making my body do these things. Don't put yourself into it. Don't add this layer of negativity into it. Okay. I just read an in interesting uh, article about uh, this lady who never experiences pain. And they said that this lady obviously have things happen to her body, like, you know, she breaks and angle or whatever but she heals a lot f faster than everybody else as well i was just came to my mind that is it because she doesn't really i mean she doesn't obviously doesn't feel the pain but those things still happen to her body but you would think that maybe she doesn't go into negativity and that's why the body heals itself easier because you're sort of not pushing it and you, it makes you more anxious. And like for me, my stomach is like, it, um, I get more stressed. And then, 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 you know, then my guts get more and worse and worse. So try to find a good way of like, okay, well, um, here we go again. Notice that thing and try to, you know, bring up positivity around it. Okay, I, I'm doing the best I can. Okay, it's, it's happening again. The body is hurting. What you know? There's not much more you can do about it, but if if you can slowly chip away at it, and don't try to push it away, that that doesn't you know work. But embrace it. Same with I've noticed that for myself, if I go into the slight depression, you think this is it. It's gonna last forever. I'm my mind is gonna be like this all the time. You just you just want to push it away straight away. But if you can learn how to, okay, see the mind, it seems to be blue, it seems to be very, you know, not, it's sort of yucky mind. But if you learn how to be kind towards it, be friend towards your body or your mind, then it's a lot easier to be with those mind states. And hopefully they won't last as long. It, keep, it takes time, but I, 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 as far as I can know from the Buddhist uh, teachings that the, the Buddha always says that the, the kindness, the loving kindness, the softness, the, the mudu, all these things where the Buddha always says that, you know, you cannot win these things with war. By kindness alone, you can, you can do something about it. So just kindness, kindness, kindness. And, you know, you have faith that it works, that, you know, just keep at it. Keep at it, keep at it. What, you know, that's the best you can do. The worst thing you could do, stop.
stop, you know, and go back into the fight. That's the one you think you, you know, you know how to fight. Well, you have to turn away from it. Very good. Any other questions? Or did you want to comment on anything else? Did, no? All right. Yeah, I think it's, uh, for me, I mean, I don't like to talk about my sicknesses and all that, but I think it's valuable sometimes to, for me, even mention that I'm actually a quite a weak person myself. Yeah. But I have a question. Mm. It's uh, fear. So how does, because I, I feel the fear manifests in, in your mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. And how can the heart, because a lot of it is fear of uh, not succeeding, you know, loss. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, I'm yeah. just uh, connect, connecting with your heart and how you can get rid of that mind saying, don't do it because that's going to not work. Yeah, with the fear, uh, the, I, I like Ajahn Brahm sometimes gives his teachings like actually, it's that you could do one thing, uh, which is the Kayanusati, where you actually see it where it's in your body. Then instead of turning away from it, because you, if you have more time and you know you, you notice that it comes in certain occasions, then you can actually go into see where it's in your body. It all these emotions they actually manifest in your body. So that's a, one skillful way would be the kainasati, where you have the mindfulness of the body. Where is it in your body? Where is the fear in your body? Try to find it. Actually find the spot and actually try to alleviate that, that physical thing in your body. Just have, you know, you can actually massage that place and, you know, have kindness towards it, wherever it is in your body. And when you, you actually doing something very physical to alleviate that, the fear which is coming up, it's it helps that fear. And then you, you can notice that every time it comes, you, you notice that bodily feeling coming with it. And maybe the bodily feeling is already there before you even notice in your mind. So then you can actually, oh, I can feel the fear is coming. Well, then you don't go that far anymore. The fear doesn't get so big because you get afraid of the fear. So you're not afraid of it anymore. So try to have mindfulness of that fear. Yeah. Very good. Is there anything in internet? Very good. Hello, internet. Thank you, Bhante. The no. online question mm -hmm. from Hussein Jaja is How do you start meditating? What state should your mind be in? Mm. Your mind state should be in a state where you sit down and what it's what it is what it is. It, 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 basically, meditation is what we teach is should be this. The practice should be constant. If you say meditation, okay, what do you, a lot of people say meditation is that you know you sit down on your bum and you know that's your meditation. Well, it's a bit too late to do anything when you're just sitting down. You, you have your mind state now. It, it is what it is. You're not going to, okay, I'm going to go and change my mind state. Hang on. I'll be back. Then I start meditating. The meditation, the practice should be that it's a bit more constant. It's every day. You try to be more aware. I'm trying to be a softer person. I'm towards yourself, not towards others. First, self first. That's what we have to remember. Kindness towards yourself. And when you have that kind of mind from your day-to-day -day life, more and more try to, you know, go your, uh, set your mind towards that. Then when you sit down, then your mind is soft. It's not going to be thinking, 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 thinking. I'm going to sit down thinking, 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 thinking. I'm getting, okay, now it's meditation over thinking, thinking, thinking. Your mind is what it is. And when you start meditating, you're not going to stop it. You, you take the mind, whatever you had from your whole day, into your cushion. If your whole day you've been skillful towards your own mind, 
then you're going to be skillful towards your mind when you sit down. And the, but the, there is there is a truth. What I was saying for myself as well. I I've been lately into this habit of I sit down, and I just get into dullness, because I've been doing it for so long. To just, I just plonk my my bum on the cushion, and it's like here we go again. I just sit in the airplane. Blah 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 blah. Okay, here we go. Okay, hours gone. That was it. I've been going into this dullness, and I now have to cultivate somehow. It's going to be my ongoing practice for myself. Elate my mind a little bit, because dullness is not a good place to be. It's the, it's sort of like you calm, but you just dull. Nothing is happening. I need to somehow learn now to elate my mind. And for one thing I've noticed for myself, been, you know, practicing this a little bit now for a year or so, that one thing elates me is like, oh, well, at least I'm a monk. So that brings joy in my mind. At least I'm trying to do something good. I'm not just running around like I used to be in the world. So try to elate your mind at least. That would be a skillful thing to do when you sit down. Ah, well... Oh, good. I'm 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 meditating. I'm doing something good, uh, instead of just going and watch TV. So elate your mind a little bit. That would be a skillful way to do. Is there any other question? There is, if uh-huh. you have time. Ah, uh, yes. Um, you might like this one. Flavio has asked: Is lay life worse than the monastic life? <laughs> is lay life worse? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I wake up, people feed me. I come, now I go and people feed me. I, people provide my food and uh, my, my robes and my, my monastery. And imagine if something like that happened to you. How easy it would be for your life? <laughs> you don't have to go to work. You just go and people give you food. And usually very nice food, actually. And you, you get the really good uh, uh, clothing. I mean, okay, it's a bit of a dull color, because all of us are the same. And, you know, they're a bit of an odd... Uh, but at least we're out of fashion all the time. Not just every <laughs> 10 years. We're never in fashion. So uh, it's quite a pleasant. You look at old pictures and you look at people and I'm like, oh, yeah, that was okay 10 years ago. That was a bit odd the way they... But at least for us, we all the time out of fashion. So that's the, be- that's the first benefit you get as a monk. And that's a w- what the Buddha said. At least people respect you. They give you requisites, food and all those things. They take care of you. People really, I mean, being a monk, is re- it's a really nice thing to do. I mean, how many of you go to work and people are like, oh, so nice to see you. <laughs> oh, I just, I just listened to your talk and it was so great. Oh, you're doing such a beautiful work. How many people get that praise? I get it all the time. See how good it is to be a monk? I, I highly recommend it. So that I think that might, might have to end. I have to go and eat the beautiful food being provided <laughs> for me and for all of us. So um, we will leave the questions for another time. And thank you. It was so nice to see everybody. Sa- 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 sa-